So welcome to this super quick video on how we could figure the parental controls on a PlayStation 5. Uh, you can see I have logged into my primary PlayStation and a full adult account on a PlayStation and I'm going to go across here. I'm scrolling across with my controller to settings. Let me go to settings. I'm going to scroll down to family and parental controls. And under here, I'm going to tap or select the family management. Finally, under family management, let's go ahead and click or select the add a family member. Now you can see it's giving us the details of where we should go to create a child account or indeed invite an existing adult account to join the quote unquote family. Um, but Or we can scan a QR code and use our mobile device. So let's switch over now to just a normal internet browser and I'll show you the rest of the configuration before we come back to the PS5 and, and finish off that configuration. So let me pause the video while we switch across to our internet browser. So here I am on my browser on my local laptop and it's here that I'm going to sign in with my primary parental account on the PlayStation Network. Assuming I can remember my password because it's been some time. Okay, immediately under the family management, which has come up by default, I now have the option to tick on add family member, I'm going to tap that, and I can add an adult, so somebody who has an existing account, or add a child, or, or create a new account for a child. So I'm going to tap on add a child, and the first thing I need to get right is the date of birth. Once I've entered a date of birth, I can now go through and create a sign-in ID for my child to use on the PlayStation. I've set a sign in ID, I've typed the password twice, and I'm going to tap next. Um, it's worth having a look through here where to ensure the console works as intended, certain usage data is collected. Child can select one of the two possible options, limited data or full data. The data will always be protected and they could change the selection at any time by visiting privacy settings or privacy settings in the console or in the PlayStation console or even here in the web page. So let's tap next. Your child will have the option to select different degrees of personalization, personalized PlayStation settings. We'll always customize what they see a little, for example, to avoid showing them content they've already purchased from the store. They could change, the, change these settings again for their account at any time by again visiting the privacy settings. Happy with all of those, those Disclaimers, then I'm going to tap Confirm. Um, this, the next bit is finally about the personal information for our child's account that will be stored with PlayStation. Um, but also note that our child will be able to make changes to certain actions with their account. Uh, see their social privacy settings. Uh, choose whether to tell Sony around their communication preferences using third-party services and so on. Um, importantly, really, for a child account, we should, of course, be providing supervision uh, and, and make sure that our child is protected and doing the right things at all times. But if we agree to the above, we, of course, click Confirm. And it's here now that we can set some of the parental controls. For example, age level for PS5 games. Here I'm going to say, let's say it's uh, ages 7 or older. And you can see it's got games with these ratings can be played, which is 3 or 7. OK to that. Age levels for PS4 and PS3 games. It's an approximation. Um, and I'm going to select something around the lines of level 3. Happy with that configuration. We could change the age level for things like DVD and Blu-rays. Um, and here you could see set the age level for playing Blu-ray discs. The lower the age, the tighter the control. Um, at this point, I don't actually ever use the PlayStation for Blu-ray or DVD, so I'm going to put this as a zero. And again, for DVD, I'm going to put this as a one. The lower the level, the tighter the control. I'm not going to change country or region. Um, I could restrict the use of PS Virtual Reality. Um, I'm not going to here. I'm going to... You'll note that the PS Virtual Reality headset isn't for use by children under the age of 12. Um, and so in this instance, it's automatically restricted, which is fine. 
and from a web browsing perspective you can either restrict or not restrict so I'm going to select restrict tap OK and I'm then going to go and tap confirm happy that these settings are in place we could look at things like communication and user generated content which is part of the network I'm going to restrict all of that including their friends um, we can restrict chatting and messaging with other players as well I want uh, there's no other way to either restrict or not restrict it's not selective so I'm going to select zero or restrict and then finally a monthly spending limit I'm going to set as zero dollars and we can worry about that at a later point let's go ahead and tap confirm the time zone I'm going to set specifically to where we are which is Brisbane Australia and then we could change daylight savings automatically and you'll see each day's playtime settings are valid in 12 midnight of the selected time zone. Time played for each day also resets at 12 midnight, which is great. We're going to confirm that. And then we could restrict the playtime. So this is similar to the downtime options that you have with things like Android and iPhone. We can restrict the playtime here. We can log out the device when the playtime ends. So that's a forcible way of logging or locking the device. So if they haven't logged out, too bad. The PlayStation will do it for them. And here we could say the duration and playable hours. We're going to make it every every day is the same. I'm going to set as 30 minutes uh, with the start time of no earlier than 7 a.m. and no later than 9 p.m. Tap OK. One thing to note: playtime settings are applied to both PS5 and PS4. If your child plays games on both of these devices on the same day, the time spent playing is accumulated or added up. So just be aware of that. Happy with that configuration. Happy it's nice and simple there. I'm going to tap the play settings confirm. I'm going to tap agree and add to family. And you can see the child's account has been created and added to family. We need to verify the child's email address for them to sign into the PlayStation Network. And then once we've verified the account with the PSN, we will then be able to sign into it on our PS5 device. Let me tap OK to that. Okay, so we've added a new child account to our family here via the PlayStation website. Let's go back now. Well, let's go and verify our email address first, and then let's go to our PS5 and add the new family account. So here we are back at the PlayStation 5 console. Um, I'm going to tap OK to the add family member section. And really the next thing we want to do is under family management you can see now that the account has been added. Um, but at this point we can't log into it yet. We can't log in with it to the PlayStation 5. So I'm going to keep pressing circle to cancel out of this. And let's go over here to the settings or to the profile section, scrolling down to switch user, and it's here that I'm going to add the new child account by tapping the plus. And here we're going to select the add a user to this PS5, tapping get started. We're going to read the software license agreement thoroughly and tap confirm. Uh, and we can sign in via the QR code, or we could sign in manually. In this instance, because I've already created the account via the family, I'm going to sign in with my existing details here. Let me pause the video while I type that in. Finally, I've typed in the email login and the password for my new family account that I created earlier, and I'm going to tap sign in. Um, I can complete some of the other things for this profile account, things like profile information, my ID and avatar, i.e. the picture, and things like privacy settings. Um, if you change your privacy settings, a parent or guardian will receive a notification. So in that instance, my primary account will receive details about that. But there may be some settings that can't be changed because of parental controls. Happy with that. Let's tap next. First name is first. And last name is last.
I'm going to go through and just configure this quickly in the profile. So that is Brisbane, Australia. Going through and just configuring the profile settings for the account, I'll just simply select a simple avatar. Don't care what the online ID is for this account, given that it's a demo, so let's just do the first one that comes up. And finally, I'm going to select and go next for the online ID. Just going to go through and change some of the settings here for privacy for example who can see your friends nobody you can change to friends only i think that's fair enough particularly if this is going to be shared by my child with their his or her friends uh, who can see their online status while well, they're friends only who can see their gaming history uh, that could be no one it could be friends only friends of friends or anybody uh, gaming history i don't think overly invasive so i think friends only would be fine they can hide games from other players. Um, so there you can specifically select some games that you don't want other people to see. Uh, who can ask to be your friend? Friend of friends, not anyone I think is reasonable for privacy. Again, the same here. Who can interact with you through parties, games and messages? Uh, friends only, I think is appropriate. Uh, and getting cross-play game invitations. I mean, that's more and more common these days. So I'd leave that as allow and then click apply for the privacy settings. Again, this is specific to this profile that we've logged in with. I'll wait for that to apply now. I'll wait for that to apply now. Um, we don't need to do a PS5 login passcode. I would only do that on the parental control accounts that are configured on the PS5. For example, I would only turn this on for my account that has uh, controls on the device. So happy with that. For now, we're not going to turn on a passcode. And you can see already the prompt of 30 minutes is left for logging in. We can go ahead and set up two-step verification for this account. Uh, I'm not going to do that at this point. I'm just going to click do this later. And there you go. You can see we have logged in finally to the device. And if we scroll across here to settings, we go to family and parental controls. Have a look at playtime. You can see we've got 29 minutes left, uh, and the playtime is between 7 and 9 a.m. 9 p.m. So you can see that those settings specifically have already applied. If we scroll down to PS5 console restrictions. Uh, this is a this is it then requires a passcode, which is configured by you as the admin. So clearly your kids would need to know what this is, uh, so they can't manage anything there at the moment. Let's scroll down to family management. And under there, you can see the top most account is the family manager and the two other accounts that are family members. So as far as controls are concerned, there's not a lot there for them to be able to change or configure. So let's just check if something as simple as parental controls are applying to this machine. I'm going to go across and try and run something like Destiny 2. If I go and select that, you can see immediately you can't use this game or app because of parental controls. You can send a request to your parent or guardian to allow them to you to allow you to use this game or app. At this point, let's just click cancel. Let's just go and have a look at something else that's installed, like Mr. Hibble. And you can see that this game is loading immediately without any interruption. So the restrictions on content are applying already, which is great. Um, let's go and see the process for what happens if they launch a game and request additional access. For example, uh, a child is logged in and they try to launch Destiny. Let's see what happens when they send a request. So we tap the send a request. And wait for that to process. Here is my 
PlayStation 5 app that I'm logged into at the moment and I can simply browse across to the alarm bell and there you can see that the request to play a game Destiny 2 has been selected I can tap that specific request and then I can approve it I'm now in the family management page specifically for this child account and down and when I scroll down to allowed games we've got a gameplay request of one if I select that specific request and you'll note that the setting only applies to PS5 consoles uh, the requested app was Destiny 2 if we tap on the arrow I'm now going to select the blue allow And you can see on the on the PS5 console now it says accepted your request to play. And then if they tick OK and then try and load Destiny, the game launches. So that's it as far as parental controls are concerned for the PS5. There's a lot there to take in. I hope that's been helpful for you. Any questions or feedback, let us know in the comments. Otherwise, we'll see you in the next video. And thank you for watching.